Thank you. Okay, kids. We are supposed to learn to become like children. This is really, really important. Jesus said, unless you become like a little children, child, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. I'm thinking it's a big deal, yes? Unless we become, he, who is he talking to? Well, he's obviously talking to little kids, right? No, he was talking to indignant disciples who didn't like kids around. Any of you ever feel that way? Yeah. Bless you. <laughs> Get tired, don't want, want the kids around. You know, don't be noisy. Oh, no, the kids are coming over. We're in trouble. Or, you know, how about on Sunday morning when we have a meal? On Sunday morning when we have a meal, an agape meal. It comes the first Sunday of the month normally, right? Yeah. What, what do the kids do? They all sit at the table, use their knife and their fork, clean up after themselves, no crumbs on the floor, and they walk out of here just as angels. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Be here on a Wednesday night and you'll find Pastor Bill sliding down the hall, the row with them when getting in trouble too because you're not supposed to run in the church building, right? <laughs> <laughs> Little children, have you noticed they'll kind of just talk to anybody? Yeah. I mean, they, they really don't care. They'll, whatever you look like, smell like, They'll just talk to you. Children kind of are open to everybody. They haven't learned prejudice as they're younger. Prejudice is one of those things they get taught by the people around them. So they don't recognize things that they should be prejudiced about, supposedly. They, they don't know about earning position and importance. Now, there is a pecking order. They kind of recognize that. In every little group, they know and can figure out real fast who's the biggest, and that person takes over, and they can kind of get that. But little kids, they, in fact, Little kids are trusting, they're innocent, they're, they, they don't have the pretense that adults do. Now listen to what Jesus said. I'm in Mark, the 10th chapter. We're in this series in which we're trying to learn about being disciples of Jesus Christ. We're trying to become more like Him. And listen to what happens with the disciples. This is one of those very important teaching moments for his disciples. Jesus has just been talking to the disciples and has again reminded them, I'm going to die. I'm going to Jerusalem for that purpose. I'm actually going to be killed and turned over to the religious people and then to the Romans. I'm going to die. And in three days, I'm going to rise again. And now he's getting to this conversation. He's also, incidentally, in Mark, Jesus has just been discussing marriage. Uh, do marriage and children kind of, uh, are they a similar topic? Thinking so. Uh, if you don't, it, one of the best things you as a husband and wife can give to your children is a good relationship. One of the things that continues, and we talked about this last week because it also came up in the area of divorce. Divorce is one of those things that, that will harm children and harm family. It, it just does it. And so we have to learn how that, that marriage and divorce and all these things, they can, all kind of start fitting together. And here Jesus is talking to the disciples, verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child, watch out, will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. <laughs> How many of you have spoken to an infant? Come on, show the hands. Come on, show the hands. And, and when you speak to an infant, have you guys noticed how adults speak to infants? <laughs> Think about it. We're going to probably say that more than once a day. Adults, grown adults, Supposed to be helping children to learn the language. And how do they speak to infants? 
with non-understandable gibberish. Okay? Oh, it's all oh, What in the world? Think about the kind of communication that these big adults are making. We, we ought to tape them. Watch, watch a grandparent. Watch Debbie when she becomes one. Because <laughs> I obviously wouldn't do these things right. <laughs> Watch the kind of communication that you have with infants. And Jesus is saying, we all got to become like little children. Maybe that's why grandparents, you know, are, become grandparents. So they become like little children again. They, they start to play again. They, they get excited again. They get energy again because they get down there with the children. But, but it's kind of goofy, isn't it? The kind of language that we actually develop <laughs> as big people when we're with, the, with little infants. Jesus says we need to become like little children to become part of his kingdom. And he used a rather strong phrase there, didn't he? He says, unless you become and receive the kingdom of God like a little child, you will never enter it. Well, these people were bringing their children to Jesus. Why were they doing that as parents? If Jesus had come to town and you had a little child, what would you do with that child? Stay home. This is not for you. This is for the adults. No. If you had a child in that day, you'd bring that child to the rabbi and you'd say, Rabbi, please put your hands on my child and bless my child. And then down the road, you'd be telling that child about how oh, you were blessed by the local rabbi. In fact, you were blessed by Rabbi Jesus of Nazareth. And he came around. We need to be bringing our children to Jesus Christ right I mean it's a responsibility that we have and so any of you who are parents and grandparents think about it have you ever wondered I'm sorry I'm gonna to try to stop saying that okay so if I say it again you just say it too okay sure. think, about it. think about it thank you okay. thank you okay so If we are going to reach the next generation for Jesus Christ, which is our responsibility, would you agree? The responsibility of every Christian is to pass on what they've received. And the responsibility is to pass it on to the next generation. How are we going to do that if we do things the way the previous generations did it? Don't we have to learn to speak the language, use even the music? Yes. The rhythm, the tones, the sounds that are going to speak to the next generation if we're going to yeah. communicate with them. It's going to take us maybe giving up some of the things that we want. That's one of the reasons why you gave up pews, correct? Somebody's saying, oh, we had pews here? <laughs> <laughs> you have to do things because we have responsibility and grandparents, you especially, have a major role to play in the grandchildren coming to know Jesus Christ. Obviously, moms and dads are right there at the core of it. But grandparents have this extra responsibility. While the moms and dads are busy doing all the other kind of stuff, grandparents have to be on their knees for their children and their grandchildren. Your prayers are critical for your grandchildren.